Hey, I'm Markia. Want to hear something scary? Haunting at Kempton Park Hospital. Life is filled with so many unanswered questions. But the quest for knowledge can drive us to find the truth, or it can drive us mad trying to find the answers. Sibongole grew up in Johannesburg, South Africa's biggest and very picturesque major city. But there were things about her past that troubled her. Like the fact she was born in the once highly renowned, but now infamously haunted Kempton Park Hospital, which inexplicably closed its doors on the day after Christmas in 1996. There were rumors of extreme malpractice, but officials debunked the claims, stating it was just understaffed and in the wrong area. Every so often, someone in the local government placated the public suggesting it was going to be renovated and reopened, but the false promises never came to fruition. The grounds are empty and most say are haunted without any official explanations. To this day, abandoned hospital beds still lined the halls, jars of organs rotted in the labs, and splatters of blood covered the walls. Sabongale was resolved to brave the grounds regardless. She'd heard there were old files still inside, and having been adopted, was hoping to find information about her birth parents, unable to access current records through the normal official channels because of her age. Late one night, she snuck out of her house and rode her bike to the hospital. She locked her bike to a fence, pulled out her flashlight, and quickly found a way in through a broken door. As soon as she entered the building, she was overcome by a horrid stench. She gagged, pulling her shirt up over her nose and mouth. The building was somehow freezing cold inside, and she wished she had brought a jacket, but she continued on, determined to get what she had come for. Sibongale followed the dilapidated signs, guiding her deeper to the maternity ward. As she got closer, she heard babies crying. The hospital had suddenly closed almost 20 years ago, staff even leaving behind expensive equipment. Although there hadn't been any patients left when it was abandoned, she still shuddered at the thought of those who had not made it out alive. Just outside the nursery, she found an office with multiple filing cabinets. She thumbed through the files, searching for her name. But there were so many. After what felt like the hundredth baby girl named Sibongale, she felt goosebumps pop up all over her neck and arms. Finally, this must be me, she thought, looking at the birth date. The file listed Operating Room 4 as the site of her birth, but there were no names listed for her parents. The only clue was that following her own name was the last name Sitole. Sibongale clutched the file to her chest and wandered down the hallway, weaving around empty beds with bloody sheets and various surgical implements strewn haphazardly across the floor. She was looking for the operating room where she was brought into the world. Maybe there were other files or clues there. The crying grew louder and more desperate, but Sibongale continued. After what felt like forever, she finally saw a sign that had dropped to the floor years ago that read, OR4. She peered through the large, dirty window and saw an old operating table and surgical equipment. Everything was there, except the doctors. She tentatively stepped inside. Suddenly, the door slammed shut behind her. Whipping around, she pulled the handle, but it wouldn't budge. Sibongale began to panic. She looked around for another exit, but there was none. The sound of babies crying was now deafening. She had the feeling she was being surrounded. She spun around, searching, but saw no one. She was having trouble breathing, and her throat began to burn. Breathing becoming harder and harder, 
The sensation spread throughout her body and she fell to the floor, writhing in pain until... Suddenly it stopped and everything was still. Slowly, she opened her eyes and screamed. She was surrounded by ghosts of all ages. The small ghost of a five-year-old girl spoke to her in a whisper. You were brought into this world here in OR4, just like the rest of us. We tried to warn you away, but now that you have returned, this is also where you will leave this world. The spirit added, Now you are one of us. Subongale looked down at her hands and instead of flesh and bone, now saw nothing but the faded translucent outline of her ghostly extremities. Through her tears, she tried to tell them that she was alive, but she wasn't anymore. She was just like the rest of them now. Those fortunate enough to have made it out once should have never returned. Subongale saw a flashlight outside the operating window. She looked up to see a small group of people, amateur ghost hunters, no doubt. How ironic. I saw a bike outside, so there's gotta be someone in here, someone said. Subongale ran to the glass and banged on it, shouting for help, but they couldn't hear her pleas. Their flashlight beams shone straight into their eyes, but they could not see her. They tried the locked door once and then moved on. A Sibongle wailed, joining the cries of those who surrounded her, forever trapped inside OR4. If you'd like to submit a story, send me an email at somethingscary@snarl.com. Like and share this video if it gave you the chills. And don't forget to subscribe to Snarled and turn on the bell for notifications. And if you dare, Follow me on social media. Until next time, my dark darlings. Sweet dreams.